Let's now move on to the spondyloarthropathies. Here, things are going to get a little more confusing. This is now abbreviated SPA. SPA is a term introduced to label a group of disorders. I'm showing most of them here on your right that tend to involve the axial skeleton, particularly the spine and sacroiliac joints. I'll show you chest wall involvement as well. In the middle of this circle is the classic disease ankylosing spondylitis, but you can see around it a whole bunch of other diseases, including psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, and reactive arthritis, what we used to call Reiter syndrome. The problem with SPA is that although it has a tendency to involve the axial skeleton, the initial abnormalities may appear in the extra axial skeleton. This has led to these abbreviations in the literature. And indeed, in some cases, the abnormalities remain only in the extra axial skeleton and never involve the axial skeleton. In the SPA, there are certain findings that are very characteristic, differing from those in rheumatoid, and we will be pointing those out in the next few minutes. There are diagnostic criteria for SPA introduced by the SPA International Society. And here's a uh, slide that illustrates that. For example, sacroiliitis on imaging plus one other feature listed here, or HLA B27 plus two other features. Here are the features. Uh, they came out, the, the letters spine ache. I'm not quite sure how it came out so nicely with that particular abbreviation, but you can look at the features there. Those are the features, and there are these diagnostic criteria. But here, herein lies the problem. Here's a 16-year-old male with toe and heel pain. That's the initial presentation. We can see that there's heel pain related to probably enthesitis, we can see all of the soft tissue swelling, a sausage digit. We can see extensive marrow edema, the initial presentation. Here, one month later, we have hip synovitis and we have parasympathetic bone destruction. Six months later, we have emphysitis involving the ischial tuberosity. So there is an evolving picture. And in this case, the spine and sacroiliac joints were not involved. Here's another one. We'll call this hip synovitis. Clinically, it was, but is that really a thickened synovial membrane shown by Gad, or is it a normal synovial membrane? Anyway, hip synovitis initially, and only later on, three months later, was there sacroiliac joint involvement. So there are diagnostic problems because of the variability in the way these patients present. There are important imaging characteristics of SPA. Marrow edema, bone proliferation, whiskering, or osteitis. Those two are related. Dactylitis. A very important one, emphysitis, more than in rheumatoid. And of course, in some cases, involvement of the axial skeleton, chest wall, sacroiliac joint, and spine.